Greetings, Greg here again, and this video is going to be exciting because we're going to be talking about Cyberpunk Adventure and building a Cyberpunk Adventure game in Unity. And it's going to be exciting because we're going to be using ChatGPT for generating story ideas, telling us how to build the game and give us steps so you can really see how ChatGPT can be valuable there. And then we're going to use Midjourney, which is an amazing AI art tool to create the Cyberpunk art for the game. And then even to top it off, you're going to uh, stay till the end and uh, hopefully I'll, you're going to see how we can use Adventure Creator, which is an, a very amazing tool to turn and use that to create a point and click adventure literally in a matter of hours. So uh, it's, it's almost a no coding kind of thing. I, I, there will be a little bit of coding, obviously, if you want to build out a full game. But Adventure Creator is very powerful. I'm going to put a link to it down below. And you're going to see how uh, to put it all together and how you could build a cyberpunk game. And in addition, I'm going to show you how uh, some of the limitations and then how to get around them and some of the things that just in general that I came across uh, when trying to build a cyberpunk game, uh, adventure game in Unity with, with these tools. So please, if you can, click like and click subscribe. You'd be surprised of how few people subscribe compared to how many people watch these videos. And I just have to implore you to take that little bit of time just to click that subscribe button and notification. You'll get notified uh, when I do new videos and it makes all the difference uh, with uh, YouTube deciding uh, who gets to see these videos. So to get started, what I did was I started with ChatGPT and I said, I want to create a cyberpunk point and click adventure game in Unity. I don't want to code from scratch, so I'm planning to use some Unity assets. Can you recommend how I can get started? And it starts here, sure, I can give you some steps to get started. So it tells me uh, to fam familiarize myself with Unity, plan the game, get the assets, uh, create a prototype, add game logic, test and refine, polish and publish. So no argument there. ChatGPT, once again, comes through with a pretty good starting point for me. So I said on here, what are some game toolkits in Unity that would give me a foundation for creating a cyberpunk game in Unity? I want to be able to use pictures from Midjourney for the content in ChatGPT to make the story. So I'm kind of telling it here, hoping to limit the scope of the assets that it'll tell me. I don't know that it, it was helpful in that, but that was my purpose for that. And you'll see that it came back with um, these tools. And all of these are great tools. I've used all of them. Uh, and some of them I've used a lot. I've used Dialogue System for Unity a lot. I've used cre uh, Adventure Creator quite a bit. I have a course on Playmaker, which I can link to. Uh, several courses, actually, I've done in Playmaker. So this is a very valuable uh, tool as well. Um, and, and Pro Builder for building objects and things. A 2D toolkit is also useful. I could see that. Not as much in a point-and-click adventure, maybe. But, it, yeah, it could be used for that. And so then it's telling you here, um, it's telling... Uh, how you would integrate them in the Unity and just kind of telling you, you know, if their documentation would fit. So then I asked it, do you know enough about Adventure Creator to help me build a game using that toolkit? Almost like if I'm going to pick these out and it tells me here that, uh, yes, I'm familiar with Adventure Creator and can help you build a game using it. And it's telling me how popular it is uh, for point and click adventure games and it includes a wide range of features. And then it's nice because it just goes ahead and tells me <clears throat> the steps of how to use it. Um, install Adventure Creator, create a new project, uh, define the scenes, add characters and interactable objects, <clears throat> create dialogue, add the animations and sound effects, add your game logic, test and refine. So, And here it's actually talking about Adventure Creator. So one of the reasons I wanted to uh, go in this direction a little bit is there's so many times where there's really great assets on the Unity Asset Store that are going to get you started on virtually almost any game uh, foundation as a template, as a starting point, which is definitely valuable as a beginner. And so having ChatGPT know about these things and how they work and be able to, to walk through, through the steps is really valuable, and I was pleasantly surprised by that. So then I wanted to head and just ask it, uh, do you know how much about how Midjourney do you know much about Midjourney and how you prompt it for pictures and get desired results? And it says here it, it does not know much about Midjourney. It's not familiar with it. 
<clears throat> and it's a proprietary tool and as an open source AI model does not have information to it. So fair enough. It's ironic that MidJourney is actually built on t top of uh, chat GPT and open AI's tools and it doesn't know anything about it, but it shows how compartmentalized things are. And, it, and it's fair enough. It knows about Adventure Creator, doesn't know about this. So that helps me uh, in how I'm going to uh, construct my prompts going forward that I, I don't want to waste my time with things it doesn't know. And then I said, can you help me in describing the scene for an adventure game? For example, our cyberpunk adventure game, we're going to need to have pictures that are wide angle and allow point and click navigation. Then we will need other pictures that are up close. I will want you to describe the scenes in detail. And so now it goes into what I think is kind of nice also about ChatGPT is it, it doesn't always just assume it wants to get you to give it like the final answer. It'll tell you approaches and how to do these things. So starting with a general overview, writing a brief overview of the scene, that kind of thing, describing the environment in detail, add character descriptions um, in the scene, describe objects and interactables, and then of course add detail and texture. Uh, any details and textures bring it to life and then it tells us remember the goal of the scene is to create a rich and immersive world for the player to explore so one of the nice things I think about this is it's leading the chat GPD down its model so that it's focusing on the on what we're trying to do and you'll see that we, we get pretty good results in our stories I think as a result of of our prompts here so I say, great, can you give me some ideas for a story for a cyberpunk adventure using Adventure Creator in Unity? So once again, I'm reminding it that we're using this asset. I want to create my game in episodes, and we will be focusing only on episode one. But I think it is important to have an outline for future episodes. I hope to have five episodes in all. So I'm doing this to show uh, for your benefit how if I'm building out like for a commercial game that I likely would want to tell chat GPT in, in this tool my future plans for new and future episodes so that I can build this overarching storyline and then I can then narrow it down to just working on this and it and it tells me you know that it can do that and it starts an ep, an, a list of episodes here now I'm not going to read all of this out um, we're just going to focus on a little bit of just some of the ideas from this. And, and again, I'm not trying to build a full commercial game. I'm trying to show you guys how uh, in a few hours you can have a, a, an amazing game with story, with pictures, and uh, with some point and click. Especially if you have some of your own ideas already you want to explore. I think this lets you help flesh out around those ideas. One of the most compelling things, like my pro tip for ChatGPT is it's really good at taking and building around what creative and unique ideas that you have if you don't and then it'll also give you and help you come up with ideas and generate ideas and we'll see some examples of that and here is a perfect example is the case of the missing hacker the player takes on a role of the detective in a dystopian future tasked with investigating the appearance of a well-known hacker uh, the player must navigate the city's CD underworld, gathering information and clues from a cast of eccentric characters. And the episode ends with a dramatic confrontation as the player uncovers the truth behind the hacker's disappearance. So this is kind of what I would want to uh, say, for example, from a business standpoint and helping people that are wanting to, to think, always be thinking about the marketing side of these things, always be thinking about the business side is that uh, this would be what you would release as a proof of concept, let people play it. And if they like episode one, and you can get people to buy and buy into that, maybe give it away for free, then you can do episode two, episode three, and so on, um, rather than trying to build a whole big, long, you know, two and a half, three hour adventure game, you can focus on maybe, maybe a 45 minute episode or something like that. It gives people a taste, but yet it gives you you know, a full kind of wrapping up of things. And they go on to, to do the these five episodes. So, you know, you can pause the video, uh, obviously, if you want to read what it wrote. But I think it's pretty good, and I decided to go ahead with it. A lot of times what I did in this video for you guys is I didn't try to get nitpicky and try to make perfect results. The idea is to create a proof of concept, to get it out, and check out your game ideas and how it, all the mechanics fit together. Because you can always go back through and fine-tune the story, uh, rewrite it with, with better uh, prose and, and better dialogue. 
but if you if you have nothing you can you can start obsessing on like trying to make it too perfect and just like this video could have probably been done hours ago i obsessed probably a little bit too much with having it be perfect i know it doesn't look perfect but uh to be honest you, there's a lot of stopping and starting when you're doing these things and as a game developer and a designer um, you got you want that forward momentum. So I took this story and I said it's going to be good enough for our prototype. And then I wrote here, let's use the idea for episode one, but come up with a more creative name. Let's create an introduction where we describe the cyberpunk city. I want a Noyer writing style like in Tex Murphy games, but with a cyberpunk feel and setting. We are now in 2077. I used the same year that that popped the popular cyberpunk game is is with um, um, I want you to write a history of the city how it got to this point and how our main characters returning to the city after failing to track down a bio, bio smugglers so I didn't really spell right there uh, please write a 400 word introduction so um, I'm telling it to pull from certain types of games and I'm hoping that it knows a little bit about I'm telling it a type of feel and I think it did a pretty good job. I'm just going to read like the first couple of paragraphs, but it says, uh, The city was once a beacon of hope, a symbol of humanity's progress and prosperity. But that was a long time ago. Now in 2077, the city is a shadow of its former self, a dark and sprawling metropolis where crime and corruption run rampant. This is where our story begins, the return of a lone detective to the city after a failed mission to track down a group of biosmugglers. So now this... I don't care for how it described this. I would go back and have it rewrite it. And we get better with better prompts. But overall, you'll see that it's given us a, a history of the city, how the world fell into chaos, uh, chaos street gangs coming through. And then it wrote here, which I thought was nice, and I use this uh, when I'm actually building out the game. But for our detective, the city holds a different meaning. It is a place of personal failure where a past case went wrong and a career was left in tatters. Now the detective is back, driven by a desire for redemption and a thirst for justice. So um, I think I like where it went with this. I don't really care as much for the writing, but uh, but I like where it went with that. And it goes on, um, you know, and you can tell that it's in a certain style of writing here that we could certainly change. Uh, uh, it's almost like selling it as a game trailer. So grab your cyberpunk gear and join our detective as they delve into the heart of the city's criminal underworld. So, you know, it's it's good enough for for everyone understanding. There's lots of chat GPT videos. The purpose of this is to show you how to make it into a cyberpunk game. I wrote, uh, please give me some ideas for good opening scenes for our point-and-click adventure so we can have a simple puzzle or item to pick up for the inventory. We are not trying to solve a case or doing anything with the plot, just trying to get the character from la uh, landing at a local spaceport and getting back to his cheap motel in a poor city district. So this is probably the important thing that I'm telling it. And can you use ideas for puzzles from Tex Murphy games? And the fact it's telling me it does it it doesn't say it knows Tex Murphy game, but I think it does. Um, and so, you know, those are famous adventure games, and, and there's a lot of great uh, ideas to learn from them and how they build things. So, the player starts at a local spaceport where they have just landed after their failed mission. The objective is to navigate from the spaceport to their motel, and to do this, the player will need to solve puzzles along the way. So all this stuff. Uh, um, the first puzzle could involve uh, going through customs. You know, the player has lost their ID and needs to find a way to pr prove their identity. Um, they could use public transportation, but they find they need to pay a fare to get on the train. Um, they don't have money. Um, again, I'm not going to read through all this, but you'll see that it comes up with a lot of things where it has, on the way to the hotel, uh, a description of the kinds of things you're doing and then a little puzzle with it. And um, then it says here, this scene sets the stage for the player's journey through the city, providing a simple but engaging introduction to the game's mechanics and allowing the player to familiarize themselves with the game's interface and controls. So I'm very happy with that. I think that it shows that it's giving me ideas that I can use. And then a lot of times as I'm building this out, that's what kind of happens. It's like, oh, I could use that. That'll work. And then so I can build from that. Um, then I said right here, I told you, you gave me a good idea from one of your responses. This is totally unnecessary. This is just part of what I kind of do um, when I'm working with it a little bit um, to just 
treat it more conversationally, but I don't think that this really matters. Um, please write me a 300-word detailed description of our character coming back from the spaceport to his hotel. Discuss how the city is showing signs of improvement, but the character reflects that they have not had the same growth. So I got that from its own um, description that it kind of gave me up there when it said that for, for the detective, the city has a different meaning. Um, describe getting out of the taxi and into the hotel. When going to his room, his pin code doesn't work. And so this was my idea for the first real kind of puzzle and that says these steps will teach the player how to navigate and interact with objects. Now he has to go downstairs and talk with the hotel manager and this will give us the opportunity for our first dialogue in the game. So a lot's happened here if uh, you're following along with how, how you would be in the game. You get off the spaceport or we have an introduction that it'll go through and then when we get um, on the taxi, you know, that's going to be part of that introduction. And then you get kind of dumped off. You got to go into the hotel. You got to go to your room, but you're not going to be able to get in. And so that's going to teach people how to click and point to find their way around, um, to do a puzzle. And then when they go to the, to the manager, they'll learn how to do the dialogue. And that's a way to bring people through the game. And Adventure Creator is going to do all that for us. We really just need to provide it the pictures and the, the text and the dialogue and it can create this little adventure game for us and that's one of the powerful things that chat gpt combined with something like mid journey and a toolkit like uh adventure creator is that you're taking away uh a lot of you know the story writing which is really time consuming in an adventure game you're taking away the the um the building of the code and the framework and all those little hot spots and things like that so you get you get rid of that uh, a lot of the work and then you get also uh, with the graphics and the art you can prototype if not actually create a lot of art for the game so it describes the scene well here i think um you know the player's characters just arrived after their failed mission now i think i had it rewrite this because it's it's um, telling us what the player's doing. So the perspective here. So here's a detailed description of the scene. So it's describing the scene perfectly, which is great. You know, it's like this is the kind of content that you need as a game developer, designer, I should say more as a designer, if you're coming making games, to give to artists, to give to other writers, to get, you know, and to give to people creating the gameplay. And it's creating this for us in, in a descriptive form. So I think this is nice because this is this would be great for a game design document. Um, now I said, please now write this for me using the same style as the introduction describing the city. So I referred back to that, and it even says, here's a description of the scene in the same style as the city's introduction. So I didn't have to go back and explain the types of writing I wanted in the Tex Murphy games and the, the fact that I wanted it written in a Neuer style. It's, um, um, but I did think that here that it's still describing the character in the third person, the player, the character, and that. So... Um, I, I would rewrite this. This was an example of where I wanted to show you that it didn't really quite give me what I wanted um, in terms of, of, the, of the, the subject of the dialogue and how um, it, you know, it should be referring to you as the player. It's just in the wrong, uh, the wrong style. But I think it, it, it was good enough for me to move forward because, again, I'm showing you guys how to use this, um, and it's not, it's not a commercial game. But I, I would redo that piece, to be honest. And, and, and another part of it was I already had a good, lot of writing that it had already made. So I didn't really feel like I needed a lot more from it. Um, so now it says, with Adventure Creator, I, can I make a point-and-click adventure where I don't have a character visible in the game and you're just going around clicking on hot spots and advancing from one picture to another? I wrote this because I started thinking, I, I didn't want to start building stuff in Adventure Creator if... It was going to be hard to do to use it without having like a, a player that's visible in the screen that's moving around and going and animated and all those kinds of things. I just wanted to make this a, a point and click adventure more like in the style of Mist. Uh, it, it would probably be the best example of making a game in that kind of style where the character player is a player character is typically not visible. Um, and it was really for the example of this of this YouTube video. It'd be really not that much harder to make. Uh, 
a game where you have an interactable character that's walking around. I don't think it's in terms of difficulty, but in terms of time required and maybe being a little more tedious to work through all the, that complexity, I think, yes, uh, this is simple here. So it tells me here that, yes, um, it can do this, and it provides tools for creating hotspots. And then it says when a player clicks on a hotspot, you can have it trigger events such as advancing to a new scene, opening a dialogue, or adding an item to the inventory. So there we go. You know, it's going to do everything we need. Um, and then it, I say, please tell me the steps for creating the first introduction scene in Unity using Adventure Creator. And it goes through here now and goes through the whole thing. Uh, it import Adventure Creator into Unity, create a new scene, import your pictures, create the background. And it even goes so far as to explain how to do that. Add hotspots. Um, set up the transitions. When the player clicks on a hotspot, you want to transition to the next part of the introduction. Um, and then it says repeat four to six. For each part of the introduction, repeat this. Um, importing new pictures, creating new backgrounds, adding hotspots, and setting up transitions as needed. Set up the dialogue. And notice how it says when the player reaches the hotel desk, you can set up the dialogue with the hotel manager. So it's just so amazing of a tool. Not just that it knows how to build games, like in terms of the steps, but it knows how Adventure Creator works. It's able to combine how Adventure Creator works. Create, give me a list of steps, and, and, and specifically mention the introduction. Repeat these four to six steps for each part of the introduction. So it knows we're just talking about the scope of this part of the game, what we're trying to do with the tool, and it also knows here at the end you know it actually mentions when the player reaches a hotel hotel ah, hotel desk you can set up this dialogue and to do this you can create a new dialogue script set up the dialogue options and responses and attach it to a hot spot in the hotel desk scene so um, i'm again one of the reasons i'm bringing this video out is because i do believe that uh, this is still new to people it's new to developers it's new to game designers and if you're somebody watching this who's not even a game designer you'll notice there's not there's no coding yet. You haven't had to do anything technical at all. It's all just giving some prompts to an AI, and it's telling you exactly the steps you need to go th here uh, to do it. So it, it's pretty amazing. And it says here, since there's no visible player in the game, should I probably make this a 2D project? So I thought that was a fair question. Yes, using a 2D project, Unity would be suitable for a point-and-click adventure game where there is no visible player character. So that helped me decide that I want to do a 2D project. And then I, I wanted to have, um, I went back to the story. So some of this is going to be, you know, in and out of order a little bit. But I didn't like that. I said before I didn't like that order that they give. And, and um, so, no, actually, um, this is kind of like where I would, it, you know, if I was doing short form content, and this wasn't going to be a kind of a longer video. I would probably break this up into another video. But um, this is where I started working on the on the graphics. So I've kind of checked off where I've got a story, I've got the idea for the game. I know it's a detective, and right now we're just doing the simple introductions, and getting them to the room, and getting all that that hotspot piece of work. That'll be everything you need once once I show you how to do that. Why you gotta wait till the end of the video uh, to to set that all up? But uh, but the nice thing is now we can move on to the to the graphics and pictures, which is gonna be the cool part of the game. And I want to make sure and show that to you. So what I said was when describing a cyberpunk city from a wide shot, you may want to focus on the following keywords. Well, I said, I want keywords that will be good to feed an AI to generate the image. And notice how it's giving me these words that I can use. And then these words I can use to feed into mid journey, the AI tool. Now, um, mid journey runs in uh, discord and I'll be, sharing that that with you here in a second uh, but uh it's we're going to need to feed it these kinds of things um and then i told it can you write me a short 75 word description of a side of her punk city using some of those keywords and i was just trying to get it to write a, a little description of the city here that i thought uh, would be nice um, and then I was also trying to get it to just give me um, some more keywords by saying, can you now explain it as someone trying to create a painting of the city you just described? So uh, someone trying to create a painting. And then now it's saying you will focus on capturing its contrast between advanced technology and poverty. The city should be portrayed as a labyrinth of towering skyscrapers and narrow alley alleyways. 
with neon lights illuminating the night sky, holographic advertisements and flying cars should be incorporated, bustling crowds and street vendors should be portrayed to capture the city's energy and liveliness. The hum of machinery, you know, overall the painting should evoke a sense of wonder and danger in the viewers. So I like this. I liked it. I'm looking at it from different angles. Again, I'm trying to show you guys some strategies for using ChatGPT to create your story, create your game. So you can have a much more interesting game with less effort. It doesn't mean it's going to just build a game for you. And, and these AI tools, the people that can use them well are going to leverage their time, they're going to leverage their skill sets, and they're going to be able to create kind of almost in, in, in at a 10x level uh, uh, of speed than if you were just having to write all this stuff yourself and build all this yourself. So I, I think it's going to change uh, content creation uh, in, in a lot of industries, and game design is not going to be an exception. And then I said, help me describe the atmosphere and qualities to create a good image for the game. So I'm again, I'm just really pushing it to turn out more. So we got, again, some of the same futuristic, gritty, diverse. I like the diverse idea because, you know, you want to see different like types of people and things. Not like everybody looks homogenous. Uh, dangerous, mysterious, vibrant. You know, so there's, there's some contrasts uh, here. Um... I kind of want my, uh, when I was building this, I kind of had the envision for more of a lonely cyberpunk, which simplifies things. In a lot of the Tex Murphy games, you know, you'll notice that they intentionally put him in like areas of the city where, it's, it, where there's almost no people because it makes it obviously easier graphically and for plot and limiting choices. Uh, for the, it's, you know, it's a good game design choice. What do you think the best aspect ratio would be for the pictures in the game? And I already knew this, and I'd actually already typed it in when I was playing around with this. But you'll notice that it's saying, giving me what I need, uh, 16 by 9. Um, and it's saying for some games, you might want to use different aspect ratios. I've never personally used that, but I think that this is... Um, uh, it was a good question to ask just so that I wanted to make sure before we started having it generate pictures that we have some kind of consistency there. Now, I think I want to get into the chat uh, mid journey and, and some of the cool pictures that were generated from that. So, there's lots of tutorials on mid journey, but you basically begin by having this prompt. Uh, that you need to describe in detail the pictures you want. So here's the example that you'll see uh, where I'm typing out exactly what I want a, uh, the picture to look like. And then Midjourney is going to take that and turn that into an image. And then so throughout the rest of this little segment here, I'm just going to let it show you different pictures it created. And I'll let you see those prompts. Uh, so you can get some examples of how I created the pictures for the game. So as you'll notice, uh, they're very vibrant. Uh, they're very compelling, very surreal. So it does a great job. And I'm not going to go in into all the detail of Mid Journey. Like I said, there's lots of videos on how it works. But you can see how it works really well here to generate uh, pictures that we need for our cyberpunk game. All right. One of the other things I want to discuss is that uh, you can get more consistency between your pictures and your people if you take one of its results and then you can actually upload it and then once you've uploaded it you can right click and get a uh, URL to that picture and then have it iterate on that and so you'll see some examples that I, do, I use that a little bit here when I'm building pic uh, my pictures up to get some of the consistency between some of them. But you can see we got a lot of nice looking pictures. Uh, we can create pretty much any kind of scenes we want. You can see me just saving these off because I'm not creating high resolution versions for what I'm doing in, in this particular example. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you can use uh, Mid Journey to create all different kinds of stuff. All right, so now we get to the fun part of actually turning our stories that we've created and our pictures. Now we can actually start building the introduction to our game and start putting it, it together and see how it, how it gets built. So when I installed uh, Adventure Creator and looked, I saw there was a new game wizard. And I thought, well, maybe I should use this new game wizard. And rather than just use it, I thought I'd ask ChatGPT. And it 
it does know about it here. It tells you that it's uh, streamlining the process, and it says if we're new to Adventure Creator, the new game wizard is a great way to get started and learn the basics. So part of the reason I'll ask it questions like this, um, and you see my prompt here, is that uh, the reason I'm asking it this is because I want to know if what it knows about Adventure Creator. I'm kind of testing it a little bit. And then the first question that it comes up with when you do this is uh, the game name. It wants to know your game name. So I'm not going to go through this uh, all exhaustively of Adventure Creator because there's so many videos on Adventure Creator and it's really easy to set up and use. But I wanted to get an idea of how you'd use this with ChatGPT. And you can see I had it generate 10 potential names for our game. So um, I just picked Neon Knights uh, for ours. I asked it to generate 10 more and I thought it was kind of interesting that it it duplicated the first one or it didn't do change the first one and I think that might have been that earlier I told it to keep my first option but change the other ones uh, you know add additional ones and I think it actually remembered that instruction and and then reused it because none of the other ones I don't think are the same so uh, it, it's ironic it remembered that Okay, and then so it says, uh, what type of interface should I choose to interact with the hotspot? So that's again from this question here. So if we put in Neon Knights and we go here to the next, it wants to know what kind of perspective. I already knew we wanted 2D, so, so that's not it. But it says, what kind of uh, hotspot interactions? And it, it, when, I, when I asked it that, it actually gave me uh, some extra information about that was a little bit more outside of just this question in the new game interface so i asked it um i gave it real specifically what these were and then it wrote out them and, and their options and why i might choose each one and it says you know here it's a good idea to experiment so i like it that it's helping me along again this is for beginning programmers and developers, if you're new to this stuff, you can ask ChatGPT what it thinks and it'll give you back information that maybe is not available to you right inside of, of the program and, and it puts it right there so it's kind of nice. And I said I will use context sensitive. Will it allow me to navigate between the pictures easily to have an interactive dialogue with other characters in the game? And then so it says yes. The context sensitive interface will allow you to easily navigate between pictures and interact with hotspots and other characters in the game. So that's all good. Um, and then it asked me what kind of GUI I should use. And this one I really like. Um, so let me go and show you. I picked content sensitive. It asks which GUI system here. Um, and it doesn't really give me here which one I should use. But notice this has default AC and default Unity UI. And it was smart enough. It said here it is recommended to use the default Unity UI in the latest versions of Unity for creating a point and click uh, adventure game. The Unity UI is more advanced and has more features compared to the default AC. So it actually gave me a, a solid recommendation there, a lot, uh, which I felt comfortable with accepting. And it says at the end of the Adventure Creator New Game Wizard, it is asking me if I should organize the scene, what is recommended. And that was just something at the end. And it said, ultimately, is your choice. I can't remember if I did it or not. So after I ran it, 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 it started up and it ran in the background. It was in place. And I said to it, can you tell me the next steps to start the introduction of the game? I want to display a paragraph text of introduction and have the screen transition to my next picture and then another text, I want to use Adventure Creator's tools to do this. Now what I think is interesting about this is it really kind of missed the boat here a little bit because basically what it's doing is it's using the, it, it knows I use the Adventure Creator's new game wizard, so it knows we're using Adventure Creator, but then it has me create a script in C Sharp um, and it says add a component to that script and write a script that updates the text component to display your introduction paragraph and using this get component. So here's an example of, and you can see I stopped it right here. Here's an example of where ChatGPT just missed something that it probably shouldn't have. I think this would be um, a, a, a thing to come up here and hit this and then say uh, ChatGPT should have known that Adventure Creator has a tool to create the introductions and dialogue and cutscene. And I'd say maybe I'll just mark it as this isn't helpful. 
Um, instead, it had it recommended writing a script. It's just simply wrong. I'm not going to say it's not true, but it's not helpful because it sets us off in the wrong direction, which is why ChatGPT can be dangerous for new developers. I would, I'd highly discourage a, a developer or a, a designer, an artist, or anyone, a writer, to rely on ChatGPT alone. It should be something that supplements your own skill sets and, and that you can push through because I know that this is not a good approach. And I say here, doesn't Adventure Creator have a built-in dialogue tool that I would use to display my introduction? And of course, it just, it knows that once I tell it. And then it tells me how to do it, which is nice. So to do this, you'll need to set up a new cutscene in Adventure Creator, which will control the flow of the introduction. Um, you can use dialogue options to display your text and transition between pictures. And it additionally, it allows you to use animations and sounds. Uh, to enhance the visual and auditory experience, so it, it knows what what it's doing when you ha when you kind of redirect it and remind it, um, but it missed that and was uh, I think a little bit. And it says, "How do I create a new cutscene in Adventure Creator and create a dialogue for the introduction?" So I'm being very specific here, and I followed these directions. I was able to literally follow this step by step, and inside here I can show you how you can do this yourself. It's really uh, super easy. Um, I followed chat DPT's instructions, but essentially um, what you can do is go to Adventure Creator and in the editors here, there's a game editor and let's see, right in the settings, I think it is. Uh, see, now I'm not even, I'm not following it. It's uh, here, right here at the beginning, on start. So the scene cut scenes, you have an on start and there's a, a create button here that you click and once you've done that, it lets you create your cutscene, and each time you need to add something new to it, you'll just add a new one of these dialogue pieces, and you'll see right here that I'm just pasting in the text from each of my um, my items, like right here. Like so, here's the text from uh, from ChatGPT. I shouldn't have said items. My story. And um, then you'll see down here, it's doing it again. So what about the picture transitions? Um, and so here, let me just show you how it looks um, real quick, plain, and what you get from this. And so it seems to have, a, a, Adventure Creator has like an automatic transition on these that it knows just kind of how long to go based upon how long the text is to give people time to read it. And there's all kinds of ways it, it, and, and settings that would let you go past it. it. Now you notice the transition to the next picture. Okay, so here's where chat GPT kind of fell short for me. Um, I, it, it actually, I can't say really it fell short, but I got um, a lot going on here where um, I guess it, it's not so bad. Um, it, the, you can do a change scene action. In other words, in some respects, uh, Adventure Creator is kind of made to build, break things down into scenes, but we want to have a cut scene that's just going to run. Um, and I got into asking it a bunch of questions. I'm not going to go through all of them here, but long story short is it was confusing in that Adventure Creator has a term for scene that's not the same as the scenes in um, uh, Unity. So I was going through this and it gave me good instructions on how to set background images um, and, and how to do everything I needed to do. I was, as I asked it questions, uh, ChatGPT was good at giving me good results back. But like when I said here, I'm struggling to uh, swap pictures, all of this set scene was confusing. And this is where I asked it the question. So scenes in Adventure Creator are not the same as scenes in Unity. And, I, and then it answered me back, yes, that is correct. Scenes in Adventure Creator are different from scenes in Unity. Scenes in Adventure Creator are a collection of game object assets and settings that make up a portion of your game, while scenes in Unity are a way of organizing your game objects in Unity Editor. This was very enlightening to me because I was kind of, conf you know, really confused. I, I just didn't know Adventure Creator that well that it was using that terminology. And so here's a good example of 
don't just sit down with ChatGPT and try to make a game with Game Creator with it. Instead, watch the tutorial videos. Take the time and use the, the more the old school training and really kind of get up to speed with Adventure Creator because it's a very powerful tool. There's been a lot of professional games. I got a link to it down below, and there's and uh, you can go and you can look at the showcases and see all of the amazing in, indie games that have been made using this toolkit. So it's a very capable toolkit, and it's a it's a much better place to get started as a game developer trying to get your first game out. Uh, using a toolkit like Adventure Creator than coding a game from scratch. Can you help me create music for my cyberpunk game? So it talks about like the different kinds of music you can make. So so now we can talk a little bit about music in the game. We're gonna we're gonna change and talk about the music. And so what I did was I went to Envato Elements, and that's another. Um, link I can give you and Envato Elements is amazing and I, I would highly recommend it to anyone. I've got a link down below where you can get a discount if you use my link but I use this and I've paid for my monthly subscription now for a couple of years and, it, and it's invaluable because you get pictures and graphics and videos and sounds and music that are all royalty free and you can use them on any project. So for example I can go here to music and say cyberpunk and it's gonna now show me game actually literally music um what's the number of results here 868 royalty free music tracks that actually have the word cyberpunk already in it so you know you're going to find something for this genre but you can pick any like anything so you could say uh blues and it's going to have of course that's a whole category but basically there's just thousands and thousands of music and they're high quality they're professionally done it's not ai generated that's not what this is um i do if you're interested please comment down below i do have some ai generation tools and i could show you how you can like create your own unique soundtracks and how ChatGPT can you uh, help you do that for your games and that's real interesting as well but let's just go back to cyberpunk and um, you can see how you can preview. Audio jungle. And it puts that in there so you can't like steal the sounds. You can hear that's kind of nice. And um, so now if I want to use that in the music for, for my game, I can just click this download and it's going to then let me have it and assign it to a, a license in my project so it knows when it sees you out on the internet there's at least some kind of system behind there that when it says hey these people are might be stealing this content it can look it up and if the names match the projects match your download it can kind of save uh, DMCA takedowns and things like that so it's a nice little system you get lots of choice I've never had a copyright violation from anything I've uh, that I've used off Envato Elements and finally I wanted to show something really cool um, this is called Murph.ai and this is if you didn't want to do your own voiceovers so I'm showing you another little uh, trick to tie this all together and um, so uh, this I, wrote, I took our intro here, the city was once a beacon of hope, and I, and I ended up putting in some pauses here, so they have a way where you can add pauses, because it made it sound better, and I also slowed the speed down a little bit, and I also brought the pitch down a little bit more, so her voice was a little bit more uh, mysterious sounding, because this is really kind of used for usually courses and education and narration of YouTube videos. It's really not these AIs, but you'll hear, listen to the, the quality, and yeah, you can maybe tell it's a, an AI voice, but it would be great for prototyping and getting your game out, like for a Kickstarter project, so that you could, uh, you know, maybe monetize and then get professional voice actors to replace it out. So now let's go ahead and just listen to what this says with this AI voice that I that um, I didn't have to pay anyone. This is just a free trial. So here it goes. The city was once a beacon of hope, a symbol of humanity's progress and prosperity. But that was a long time ago. Now, in 2077, the city is a shadow of its former self. A dark and sprawling metropolis where crime and corruption run rampant. And there you go. Uh, not too bad, I would say. And of course, the idea would be that you would go through and continue to improve on this. And they have 120 different voices. So if I hit this explore, 
Um, I picked uh, her here, but you'll see there's a whole bunch of them, just to give you an example of a few. Unwrap the rumpled golden cover to reveal a chocolatey treasure. We are innate, and we believe in breaking every unattainable beauty standard the society has. Step up your grilling game with open barbecue and get ready to impress your friends and family with killer food made on the grill. No Life gives you enough things to worry about and your job doesn't have to be one. Meet Recruit Fast. So as you can see, the AI voices are getting better. This is a pretty good one. I should be able to have a link down below. If I don't, uh, you can go there directly. But if, if I do have a link below, uh, you know, it is an affiliate link. It does help me. It does help support the channel. Uh, but I do like this product. This is one that I would definitely use if I didn't obviously narrate my own videos. But for, for like video games or special movie content where we have to have different characters, this kind of stuff could be really, really helpful, especially prototyping. And I think even when you consider all of this, the writing, the, the image production that we got from Mid Journey and everything else, then I think a lot of it could be seen in terms of a, the prototype for an ideas for games that you can get it out, get in people's hands. And if the ideas are good and your gameplay kind of uh, secret sauce is good, you can always replace out these elements where the AI just kind of fell short. So now before I wrap this up, I do want to show how it told us about the hotspot. So um, I'll find that here. And so one of the nice things about adventure games and having a tool like Adventure Creator is you can really get the story out and the navigation and go in between things really easy with something like ChatGPT and Mid Journey because it, it's relatively simple gameplay. So I asked it here, how do I use the hotspot in Adventure Creator to go to another scene? I tried myself. But it goes to the next scene, you can still see the text. And th that was just something that just kind of happened when I was messing with things. But notice how here, in Adventure Creator, to navigate between scenes, you need to use the load scene, no, load level action. You can assign the action at a hot spot. And I followed these directions. Uh, it didn't really work right. I said that the load level action, um, it said it's part of the scripting interface. It was just a little bit confusing, but... Um, I was able to work through it. Um, I, I can't say that Adventure Creator, or I'm sorry, ChatGPT was super helpful there, but it's almost so simple. A hotspot, you can just create it by right clicking and coming and saying um, Adventure Creator 2D uh, Logic Hotspot. So here's all the options that you can choose to make things in Adventure Creator. And there's a lot of options. It's, it's really. Uh, uh, nice. But when you create the hotspot, you'll notice you have a lot of things over here that you can do. Um, and that notice here um, in this interaction, in this use interaction, I have an interaction that I've created. And notice it says hotel interest use interaction. So you assign this action, this interaction, to a whole nother object. So if I click on it, this is where. I, I can come here to any action type. So I can do anything that I need to do here, run another dialogue, do character actions, movable things, just pretty much anything you would like to do. It's like a scriptable uh, language, a little bit like a Playmaker, but without kind of a state machine in it, I guess you'd say. But the scene here, notice I can pick, once I pick the action here, I can pick switch scenes. And then I just put the name of the scene, and then that matches the name of the scene here. And you make sure that you have up here under the build settings uh, the uh, both scenes in here so it can find them. If you don't add the scenes here, you won't have them. But that's, that's pretty much it. I hope you like this. I hope you can uh, click like and subscribe. I like building these kinds of games because I think it's showing people how you can use the chat, chat GPT. You can use tools like Midjourney to create graphics. You can use uh, the the resources like Envato Elements for sound, the writing, uh, I'm sorry, the, the voiceover like Murph has. Um, there's so many different tools now to let you get your game, um, if not to a prototype stage, but actually probably be able to release it like for early access on things like Steam if you got a strong and compelling ideas for stories and ideas for things and how things will fit together. These are valuable toolkits. Uh, my last tip would be don't uh, 
use this in place of learning uh, more fundamental tools and, and, and development skills, game design skills, and because these tools are only going to be useful in the hands of people that have knowledge on how all this stuff fits together. I hope I've given you a lot of good examples and enough to get you started. So if you wanted to build your own cyberpunk adventure game, you can. Please click like please click subscribe it, it helps so much you don't know um, YouTube really uh, puts a lot of emphasis on those as well as leaving comments anything that you could do recommending games that you'd like to see me make tools uh, or AI uh, systems that you think you'd like to see me try to uh, uh, use to make games or different game genres I'm open to new ideas so thanks for watching and uh, it's a crazy time with all these tools that we can now build uh, games that are fun and quick uh, where we can just really focus on our ideas. So thanks again for watching.